Namaskar. Hello and welcome to P Guru's channel. I'm your host Sri Ayer. Today we have with us Utsav Chakraborty again, and he is going to talk about the various organizations uh, that are trying to undermine the Hindu American candidates at various levels. And and this is something that probably you are seeing for the first time. There's a Twitter thread that uh, Hindu Pact put out. And this is going to be a little bit more detailed than what that Twitter thread tries to convey. So let's welcome Utsav Chakrabarti. Utsav, Namaskar and welcome to P Guru's channel. Namaskar. Very happy to be here again. So, so Utsav, I saw this thread, read it with very, very great interest. And I figured what better than to ask the person who originated the thread to kind of walk us through some of these things, some of these names, the kind of travails they've been put through. And, and that kind of gives an idea for our viewers. Look, a lot of mud is being you know, thrown over a lot of these candidates and people are just hoping that it would stick. Unfortunately for them, we are vigilant. We see that there are a few organizations and fewer people who are running this, pulling the strings. So you get to know all the lowdown here. Take it away. Whenever you want me to start the um, slideshow, I'll start it. But it's your call, sir. Yeah, thank you so much, uh, Sri, for touching this topic. This is very critical uh, because this is just the beginning and the tip of the iceberg, if I can put it that way. Uh, what I would say is that, uh, uh, as you can see in the slide here, there is a whole spectrum of political candidates and, and, and important thought leaders of Hindu origin who are being consistently targeted over the last few years and you know you can see uh, the and it's it's not one organization which is doing it it's not even one ideological uh, uh, theme that is uh, running the attack it's a spectrum of ideology and attacking a spectrum of candidates from different ideas ideologies and political backgrounds but there is one thing in common that they are targeting and that is they are all hindus and they call themselves as practicing hindus so if you see this thread and i i want to first say that this thread that Hindu Pact has done has been put together uh, through a lot of research of people who are part of Hindu Pact as well as of people and institutions and organizations that are out there in the open source uh, uh, information gathering and network. So I must also thank this info lab for all the work they have put in into this research and we have used some of their content which is open source. So uh, I just want to say that if you look at that slide, the first slide that you have there, there is a whole lot of Republicans and Democrats. So in the first slide, you see a lot of Democrats, uh, starting with Tulsi Grabard, uh, Sri Preston Kulkarni, Amit Jani, Sonar Shah, Padma Kuppa, Congressman Raja Krishnamurti, and of course, the uh, former ambassador of the United States to Sri Lanka, uh, Atul Kesha. They, they were consistently targeted by, by OFMI, Hindus for Human Rights, Indian American Muslim Council, and Equality Labs. And we'll get into it along with Peter Frederick, uh, We'll get into each one of these names. So if you go to the next slide and here you see uh, Republicans who were tar targeted. So you see Nisha Sharma, who was a congressional candidate from California. We have Ritesh Tandon, another congressional candidate from California, practicing Hindus Republican Party. Shalab Kumar or Shelly Kumar, as many people know him, a powerful thought leader of the American Hindu community in the Republican Party. Uh, he used to run a Republican Hindu coalition. And then, of course, you have young American Hindus like Vivek Ramaswamy and Neera Janthani, who, who were, uh, you know, young people, upcoming rising stars in the Republican Party. Uh, all of them were targeted by these organizations. To the next slide. And, and of course, non-Indian Hindus like Jennifer Rajkumar, who is of Caribbean ancestry. And, and, you know, so what is happening here is that this individual named Peter Frederick, who, Peter Frederick, who is a ideological gun for hire, if I can put it that way. Uh, he, he, he comes from a very uh, homophobic Christian fundamentalist upbringing. Uh, and around 2007, this gentleman uh, started associating uh, with uh, this, uh, this individual called Bhajan Singh Bhinder. And if you go to the next slide, uh, you will see that. In this slide, basically, I cover how he targeted Tulsi Gabbard. And Tulsi Gabbard is, uh, was a presidential candidate. She actually went through a few presidential debates and won a few debates and she was probably the most important presidential candidate who kicked off current vice president uh, kamala harris of the uh, presidential debate platform because it was her debate with kamala harris that got her off and and she, she lost the the next platform so tulsi gabbard was targeted specifically by peter frederick because tulsi gabbard associated herself openly as a hindu 
she presented as a hindu she was she is nothing to do with india she is not born in india doesn't have any indian heritage but she was targeted because of that and along with uh, peter frederick another individual who you will see a lot i'm sure sure sri you have discussed about this in yes 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 and and not not then mori sandarajan uh, you know somebody who claims to be a dalit activist uh, nothing to do with dalits or uh, activism runs agenda uh, originally used to run agenda on behalf of the church of south india then started running agenda on behalf of the islamists and uh, at at one point her organization uh, you know equality labs was taken over by islamists uh, who who continued to run it until 2021 so next slide please. so here we just go into this in the twitter thread we go into the part where peter frederick identifies himself with radical uh, christian fundamentalists who are against the black slave emancipation in the american political conversation he was also on record talking about uh, supporting people who are against abortion so you know issues that otherwise are very much close to heart for the christian uh, right wing is what peter frederick used to represent and then if you go to the next slide suddenly he starts associating with issues that are close to the leftist cause and this change happened because uh, because of his association with uh, an individual named bhajan singh bhinder so bhajan singh bhinder is an individual who was a khalistani activist originally of malaysian origin uh, malaysian background who emigrated to us his brother was a top khalistani leader in india and bhajan singh bhinder maintained his role as part of the of the khalistan movement from the early 1990s he was instrumental in uh, in getting uh, weapons into india in the famous lal singh case which i later on cover but here in this slide you see uh, how ofmi which is an organization that bhajan singh bhinder founded was co-founded by peter frederick in 2007 so that is the connection that peter frederick starts having as a christian fundamentalist with bhajan singh bhinder who who is a khalistani and you know peter frederick the reason we kept on uh, bringing this up is in the conversation is because peter keeps on saying that he is not associated with ofmi you know he tweets about it but you know the, the we were showing evidence of how he was connected with it in this conversation and of course you know we we gave came up with a background of kit peter on how he keeps changing his name in his different roles first as a christian fundamentalist he used to go off as peter flanigan which is the flanigan is the last name maiden name of his mother so he he is an irish origin person in her in his earlier avatar as a christian fundamentalist then as a khalistani after 2007 his association with uh, bhajan singh bhinder he presents himself as peter singh or singh of juda and between 2007 and 2014 and 15 he went by that name quite significantly then after his association with pan islamists began and and when i say pan islamists i would say his association with care with ofmi as well as with the iamc indian american muslim council which is in largely uh, a front indian origin front of jamaat e islami uh, he presents himself as peter frederick and peter j nevers which is i don't know how he got, came with that name and this is this is a slide i took from uh, from the uh, disinfo lab report and they have done a fantastic job of connecting all these groups together and in that you will see on the lower right hand corner the ofmi and peter uh, bhajan singh bhinder and the peter frederick uh, network on the lower right hand corner here and right above that you will see the connection with the other alliances that keep attacking india from the hindu perspective and this is important because you know this this entire right hand corner is for creating dissension within the hindu community so you will see hindus for human rights on the top here you will see sunita vishwanathan you will see alliance for justice and accountability which is a front that all these people put their resources into including indian american muslim council and this right hand corner is focused on trying to create dissension within the hindu community uh, using the khalistanis and the hindu hindus for human rights group as you go towards the left you will start seeing the connection of these individuals especially on the left hand side bottom with non pakistani and isi elements so you see on the bottom here right in the middle you have a pakistani isi which has a direct connection with bhajan singh bhinder then you have their direct uh, isi's direct 
spy who was actually in jail for being a, a, a foreign agent, uh, Gulam Nabi Fai. And then you have the entire left side, which is the radical Islamist segment of the, of the, of the entire team. And in between, you will see those that are connected to the American mainstream, including USCIRF, which is the American political. Uh, you know, we had the conversation two, three shows ago about what USCIRF is. Yes, yes, yes. And and underneath here, you have uh, Indian American Muslim Council, which claims to represent Indian Muslims and has in its leadership Indian Muslims. But interestingly, during the rally against the Indian Embassy in uh, 2019, on uh, India's Republic Day. There are uh, pictures of IAMC folks with slogans in Urdu in their hands saying, uh, liya hai Pakistan, haske lenge Hindustan. So th that was a dead giveaway. And I, you know, there were Times of India article that, that showed that uh, evidence, which, uh, which became very controversial uh, when, during the anti-CAA protest. So IAMC is a very shady organization. And you can see why it's a shady organization because of their links to Simi as well as links to Abdul Malik Mujahid for Justice of All, which is on the left side, and then how they are connected to the global pan-Islamist network. So I would request everybody to uh, go to this slide and study this. Uh, it, it takes more than five to 10 minutes of research to just study the different links. But uh, people will see the benefit of knowing what this network is, because this is a network that will keep targeting both India as well as American Hindus over the next 10 years, I must say. And it's going to be a very vicious and a very aggressive uh, problem that we'll have to deal with. Next slide, please. Thank you so much for this. And, and viewers, I can't uh, emphasize more. You should actually blow this thing up to a big size, make a printout and put it <laughs> wherever you sit down to tweet. So you kind of know, oh, OK, this is the connect. This is the connect. Because you need to hit them as soon as they come out of the gate. In fact, today I just released one about this uh, H4RC, uh, uh, that one, Journalism Awards. And Correct. how all that is a big joke. I just released that video. Anyway, let's go to the next one. Go ahead. Yes. And, and I, you know, the. The reason in, in this Twitter thread, we try to cover uh, the different aspects of what Peter has been doing and the different aspects of what he has been doing essentially involves uh, negating and minimizing any uh, soft power that Hindus possess in America. So his job, along with that of Hindus for Human Rights and Equality Labs, is to negate and minimize the Hindu American soft power or Indian American, depending on how you look at it, uh, soft power. And one of the things he does is to constantly target Gandhi because, you know, and I'm sure many people who are, you know, Hindutva supporters uh, may have varying opinions about Mahatma Gandhi, including myself. You know, we all have critiques, have been critiques of Mahatma Gandhi on certain issues and supporters of him and liked his work on certain other issues. But one thing that we all have to accept is that over the last 75 years, Mahatma Gandhi has been India's soft power at a global level. And for individuals, organizations, and countries that don't like India or that don't like Hindus, bringing down Mahatma Gandhi as a representative of India's soft power is a paramount of paramount strategic importance to them. So one of the things these guys do, which Peter Frederick does a lot, is go after Mahatma Gandhi's image in every possible way, including physically attacking his statue. So, you know, people from the Khalistani organizations that Peter hangs out with attacked Mahatma Gandhi's statue in front of the Indian embassy in last year during the uh, Black Lives Matter riots. And, and it, it, it became a huge controversy at that time again. But it's just to show that Peter has been an active uh, uh, proponent of uh, abusing and targeting Gandhi. And of course, this, uh, this we threw in there because it was very contextual. Uh, and this happened last Saturday. And this video, I, uh, I, I, I think we sh people should go and see this thread and look oh, at. I'm it. sure everybody has seen it. This guy is. Yeah, uh, this video became became very very viral. And interestingly, this uh, Mr. Iqbal is a member of Indian American Muslim Council that works very closely with Peter. And we threw in this video because it happened exactly at that time last week in Chicago, where uh, he goes on a this gentleman goes on a rant against Patels and why it was important for Muslims to boycott Indian businesses and Hindu businesses. I mean, at one point in the video, he even says, I'm okay with you guys buying stuff from Punjabi Sikhs, 
but just don't go to Hindu or Indian shops. So this is the level of hatred this guy has. And he's actually a member of the Indian American Muslim Council. Uh, and, so, and where is he from? Where is he from? Chicago. Chicago. Chicago, but back home in India. Back, I don't know exactly where he's from in India. <laughs> but you know, it, the fact that he's a member of IAMC and considers himself an Indian and then goes on to this level of rant so, tells you the, the hatred that many of these people have. And I'm pretty sure he had this hatred when he was in India. He's just expressing himself more in the freedom of this, this country. And that should bother us all. Of course, and, of course. Yeah, and I, that, I just that, took him. I, I took him to the cleaners too on that uh, video that just released. Uh... So uh, we go back in, in this thread and, you know, we then go back to actually connect Peter's brother slash mentor slash friend and his main connect to the anti-Hindu movement, which was Bhajan Singh Bhinder. And uh, how Bhajan Singh Bhinder is close to the Pakistani establishment, uh, including, we believe, the ISI. In fact, he th this is the brazenness with which, we, brazenness with which these guys operate. He actually shows up at the consulate in, in Los Angeles and presents them with a book. And, you know, they, they, they share pleasantries and discuss things. Funny thing is that when the consulate makes a post on it, they don't spell his name correct, ever. They always change his name. Hmm. And, uh, you know, in this uh, thread, I go into the different names that Bhajan Singh Bhinder also uses. And, and that, I think, is, is done deliberately because they don't want people to be able to search him. Because nowadays, op open source uh, intelligence uh, searches are very common. You know, people are doing this all the time and exposing links. So I think this OSINT, they want to hide it from OSINT. So therefore, they change his name every time they, they post something. <laughs> and then, of course, we, we talked about, uh, uh, you know, how he targeted Raja. And one of the reasons this threat came into existence is because how he, how Peter Frederick and this entire gang went after Raja Krishnamurti, who, by the way, actually doesn't do much much for the American. I know, I know. <laughs> so, Maybe this will spur him. We are coming to his defense. <laughs> so no, no, I, I think it's more than that. I think it's the fact that they just cannot stand anybody who is even neutral. And 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 I think that is something that people should look at with a lot of concern. So, so they are so brazen and so aggressive in their approach that you know I can understand them targeting Neera Jantani who is, you know, quite open about supporting Hindutva causes, Hindutva events. I can see them targeting Tulsi Gabbard. Tulsi Gabbard has been, you know, open about her uh, opposition to Muslim Brotherhood, uh, Jamaat Islami and all these different organizations. But to target Raja Krishnamurti, who at best only says, uh, you know, pleasantries on some Indian festivals and, and, and shows up at Indian festivals, uh, that too only if uh, there is a Muslim organization invited as well. Uh, like it was during last year's Diwali in the Capitol Hill, uh, to target Raja shows that they cannot even stand uh, a person who just identifies barely as a Hindu. Uh, and that actually is, is really worrisome for our community. And if it is not stopped and countered at this time, then, you know, it will be hard for American, Indian American and Hindu Americans to even fight elections with a Hindu name. <laughs> they all have to become Bobby Jindals or something eventually. <laughs> But luckily, luckily though, uh, the, because Raja is part of the Democratic Party's establishment, uh, there was a pushback, and uh, you know, black activist uh, Jesse, Jesse Jackson also came to his yeah, support. Jesse Jackson Senior, then the some of the top leaders of the Democratic Party in Illinois, uh, in, including the uh, Attorney General, spoke spoke up against uh, this targeting, and uh, and uh, you know, they literally called him out for demanding death of Raja. I mean, the slogan that this guy used, Peter Frederick used, was uh, Raja Krishnamurti uh, Murdabad, sure. which translates as death to Raja Krishnamurti. Yeah, so, yeah. And, and and viewers, Raja Krishnamurti actually worked very closely with Barack Obama in his days as a senator or even before that. Right. I mean, Raja has a long relationship with Barack Obama. And uh, you're going and striking at the roots of the Democratic Party. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> no, it, it is surprising that more people didn't come out in support of Raja. Like, you would have expected somebody like Barack Obama should have made a yes, yes, on the, yes. Uh, to call for the death of a sitting congressman and to call him a Nazi uh, uh, on his face is, is something that, that the Democrats should have acted upon before. But it also shows that the backers of Peter Frederick, whether it is on the left or on the Islamist side, 
uh, how much influence they have within the Democratic Party setup, in general, the American political setup. It, it's a measure of that influence as well. So, so in this, we, we you know we we wanted to dig back into Bhajan Singh Bhinder's background, and uh, we we went at, back and uh, looked at some of the cases that were pending against him in India, including a case which is very famous. It's called the Lal Singh arms conspiracy case from 1992. And, uh, you know, we listed out all the weapons that he was trying to smuggle into India, including AK-47 and M-16 rifles and C-4 explosives. Uh, it's, it's, a, it's a veritable, you know, list of a small battalion. Like, you can literally arm a battalion with these weapons. And uh, as this Khalistani movement is becoming more and more aggressive again in America and Canada, people like Bhajan Singh Bhinder needs to be paid attention to. And, you know, if anybody in the U.S. administration at this point is looking looking at this or hearing this conversation they should look back at some of the records of these individuals and uh, if you go to the next slide you'll also see their connection to uh, both uh, cocaine smuggling as well as with uh, pirated cds i didn't we didn't cover the pirated uh, uh, intellectual property as much as in this thread there's only so much we can cover but uh, these individuals are also very much involved in pirate pirated dvds uh, movie, song, uh, pirating, uh, cocaine, uh, and drug trade. But somehow Bhajan Singh Bhinder get, got away because every time, whether it is in the arms conspiracy case or with these uh, drug movements, he has been uh, removed one degree of separation from those individuals doing it. So we, here we just go back and look at the larger picture in this slide, which is where, uh, you know, how this network of anti-Hindu activists, anti-India activists work in America. So on the left side, you see uh, building the narrative. So you see people like IAMC and Peter Frederick as part of those who build the narratives. Uh, Peter being the builder of Hindu fascist, uh, repeating it again in time, again and again in a Gobelesian fashion. Then you see the, the Islamophobia narrative that comes out from global pan-Islamist groups like Al Jazeera and Muslim Brotherhood links groups. Uh, there was something called the Doto database where they actually created an entire database system of fake data with uh, fake news, fake information on people getting killed. And it, it was a whole manufactured database. And they used to refer to it to uh, provide the evidence of what the propaganda they were doing about. And then you obviously have the Hindutva is the villain, which is the 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 victim, which is the Islamophobia, is the victim. And the perpetrator of that crime, or the victimizer, which is Hindutva. And that narrative obviously comes from people like Audrey Trushke and, and CJ Verleman, old hands, well-known people, uh, CJ Verleman especially being of somebody who has been in this business for a long time. He was part of the Jamaat, Jabhat al-Nusra in, in Syria, which is the Al-Qaeda branch of, uh, uh, of uh, Syrian uh, jihadists. And uh, he was embedded, embedded with them. He used to work for promoting their cause, you know, old hands at these games. Uh, then, of course, you have the narrative of genocide that is now very much present in the American mainstream with the dismantled Hindutva conference. Then you have multiple events that are showing up with this, you know, end game narrative of, OK, there's a genocide about to happen in India. So in this in this uh, setup, you, as I noted in, in my conversation before that, Peter Fredericks and Bhajan Binder's gang was to uh, be the rabble rousers. They would sow, sow divisions within the Hindu community. They would go around with equality labs and Hindus for human rights and break the Hindus into different ideological subgroups and attend to their anger. And Indian American Muslim Council will obviously play the victim card, uh, Islamophobia victim card, which they keep playing again, repeating again and again with the hijab issue, with the Babri issue, with the Gyanwapi mosque. Of course, Kashmir is their perennial... Uh, storyline and then if you go to the next slide you know then you have the police project which is uh, led by an individual named suchitra vijayan uh, who actually has a good connection with the overall global left but from a maoist angle so you know pro maoist uh, thought leaders in western countries europe and south asia are very well connected through the police police project and they have a significant amount of influence in the media because a lot of media folks are left of center. So police project provides the, the covering fire in the in the intellectual space amongst the leftist for all these other individuals I, I talked about. And the only problem in all these things, they could have all done a great job, 
on their own and Hannah had been far more successful in their anti-Hindu, anti-India narrative building had they not occasionally diverged from their agenda and started working for ISI's actual agenda, <laughs> which is to promote <laughs> Taliban and all these things. So for whatever reasons, you know, Peter and Bhajan Bhinder were getting away with all these things with OFMI and all pro Khalistan, pro, you know, anti-India na narrative. Suddenly out of nowhere, they start writing a book in support of Taliban. And, and, and if you go to the next slide, uh, I, I put it up there. Yeah. So out of nowhere, they write this book together and publish it from for Peter's uh, uh, Bhajan Singh Binder's publishing house. And this book talks about how Sikhs being targeted in Afghanistan is, is part of a fight between India and Pakistan. And somehow these Sikhs are being used by India. So that is a dead giveaway of, <laughs> of you know, the entire movement in, in Afghanistan that ran up till the American withdrawal and even after that was a Pakistani military operation. It was a ISI funded, ISI promoted, uh, ISI, like the, all the Taliban's were literally sitting on ISI's laps when they were having these uh, meetings and conversations. And every attack in the pre-2020 uh, fight from 2002 onwards in Afghanistan was coordinated with the support of ISI. And for these two individuals to write a book presenting ISI's narrative was a get giveaway that they could have avoided. It shows desperation, amateurishness, whatever it is from the ISI side. And I but, think but tell me something, Utsav. Tell me something, Utsav. This <laughs> operation Afghanistan hasn't helped out the ISI chief who, who marshaled all this thing, has it? No, it hasn't. It hasn't. <laughs> and they never they never think about it. Like during Zia ul Haq's time, also they did all these things only to end up dead. I mean, Zia ul Haq died within a year of end of Afghanistan operations. So these guys do all these things, but they eventually it backfires on them, even, you know, evidently. <laughs> so, so now, you know, this is a continuing thread. And next we are going to look at, uh, uh, you know, we looked at uh, Tulsi Gabbard, but now we are going to look at who are the politicians who were the worst affected by this and who are the least affected by this. So, you know, I just spoke about Raja, uh, how it affects Raja and how Raja's campaign is responding, including the Democratic Party's response. But one thing we wanted to point out, we started off with Neera Jantani. And uh, even though Neera Jantani is a young leader, he's in the state level and not as high profile uh, as Raja. Of course, he's, he's in D.C. But Neera Jantani's response is worth emulating from, from the community's perspective. And if you go to the next slide, you will you'll see that. You know, Neeraj was attacked the same way these other individuals were attacked. But instead of backing out or ignoring these attacks or, you know, even almost feeling apologetic about, about it as uh, Sri Kulkarni was, Sri President Kulkarni, he even apologized and, you know, said that he will not do anything more with the Hindu organizations. Neeraj Antani fought back. And he, if you see the next slide, we have the article where he actually released an entire uh, set of quotes saying that he is against global Hindu uh, dismantle global Hindutva conference that was organized last year, yeah, and it is a Hindu phobic conference. So he doubles down and fights these people back, and that has actually brought him more popularity and support. So the reason we we look into each of these candidates as as we go forward, we are already on twenty three uh, tweets. But I think we are going to probably end up with fifty or sixty <laughs> tweets with all these. Uh, events happening, we will look at each candidate and see how it has affected them. And we'll especially talk about Atul Keshab, who was a diplomat who, who suffered a lot because of these people's uh, uh, aggression. And we'll talk about Tulsi and, and some of the other people. Absolutely. So what you are seeing, viewers, is in, think of it as episode two. We had episode one where we introduced you to Utsav, and this is episode number two. I'm a big fan of Utpal Dutt, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> me too, me too, me too. Yes. Old, old time, old time, uh, you know, classical comedians. Yes, 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 yes. And, and this is episode two of Utsav. And we are going to periodically bring up and talk about this because this is like a hydra that is trying to, you know, get and mess up with every candidate. And and uh, this, this, in 2022, Ritesh has... Uh, won the Republican nomination to fight against Rokanna, 
that's going to be a fight we'll be watching very closely. Actually, Rita uh, stays about a half a mile from where I do. Oh, and, and we frequently meet for coffee. Yeah. Ritesh was very badly attacked by Peter Frederick too. In oh, yeah. oh yeah, oh yeah, oh yeah, oh yeah. So it will at least gladden his heart that somebody is standing up for him. I mean, we are standing for the truth here. I mean, really, this this is not democratic or republican. It is Hindu American. That's the target here. And and Utsav, I know it's late at the night for you. And and thank you so much for sitting down and going over this uh, tweet uh, thread with us. And we'll be back again, viewers. Please like, share, and subscribe to our channel. And don't forget to click on the bell button for notification. And as a big thumbs up, please support us by expressing your appreciation using super thanks button. Thank you very much. Namaskar. Namaskar. And uh, I'll see you soon. See you soon, sir.